Philip Schoenegger. Game number one of our semifinals will be underway when we do have updates for you guys on the backup match between Royce Walter and Brian Brown to win. We'll let you know. Storm and Just Guy Stoneblade over there, but here it's Infect, it's Miracles, and it's a Misty Rainforest. This is a replay of the match that, that Tom had to play to win the Invitational, the most recent one, playing against Reed Duke in the finals. Season three in New Jersey, mind you. I forgot about that. Yeah, not too far from here. You mean right down the street? Yeah, I, I know yeah. it's not very far. As there's a Glistener Elf. Walking distance. <laughs> Schoenager already being placed under the gun by the Glistener Elf. That is a Tundra. I'm going to have to try to keep up with these beautiful cards, as this is one of, if not the nicest Miracles deck I've ever seen. Well, the combination of beta cards and uh, cool extended arts on top of Phillip's exceptional play, really awesome to watch. There's a sense that he's defining top. And Philip played this in lieu of casting Source to Plowshares on turn one. And Tom can kill on turn two. Just takes an Invigorate and a Berserk. And he has a Berserk. Does not appear to have Invigorate at the moment. It does not appear that way. I mean, Tom can brainstorm and go for it. Well, there's Noble Hierarch, so he's going to slow it down a little bit. There's an Exalted Trigger in here. He's an attack for two. Schoenager's going to have two. In fact, Ross going to get out his Infect counter. Schoenager will draw a card. It is not a Terminus. This is a source of Plowshares in the main phase right away. And yeah, no reason to wait around. Because if you lose the fight on Tom's turn against something like Vines of the Vastwood, you could just die. Swords will resolve. Ross will gain a little bit of life. You saw the land there for Schoenager was a Scalding Tarn. He'll just pass the turn back over to Ross. Ross is going to draw a card. It's a copy of Blighted Agent. And so much patience here from Tom, electing not even to try to spell Pierce that source of plowshares. He has the Nexus in hand. He wants to fight the big fight over Terminus. See the hand, a Berserk, a Brainstorm, and a spell. Pierce Shonega's going to sacrifice the Scalding Tarn, go down to 19. Search up a land here in just a moment, and we'll see which one it will be and likely spin the top. There is a Tundra. This is the most minor of critiques, but I think I would prefer if Tom tapped the Nexus and the Noble Hierarch, because the Noble Hierarch might die or might be involved in some sort of fight, and the Tropical Island isn't going anywhere. Sure. Look at a brainstorm, a Snapcaster Mage among the cards there from the top. Schoenegger will place Menor that he's happy with. It's time to draw a card. It's not a Terminus, it's an island. It's a beautiful one. And this is a counterbalance. It's a beautiful one of those two. This is a spell, Pierce. That'll take care of that. Schoenegger waiting patiently. Does have a source of plowshares in his hand. The question is, do you fire it off on the Blade Agent now, or perhaps do you wait, or do you try to get the Ink Month Nexus? Well, the other issue with casting it right now is that it means that Tom gets to get the Exalted Trigger off the Nexus for sure if you use it on the Blade Agent. This is a Brainstorm. That's a spell, Pierce, on the swords. That's going to resolve, and now Brainstorm will as well. Tom has the ability to kill in this turn if things do line up correctly. Well, that's Invigorate, and that's Berserk. Yes, it is. That's two blue cards. So well, that's two other cards going on top of the deck. Tom is giving this some thought. Do I want to keep these two? It is the kill if it's good to go. Against an opponent with Divining Top, I would not want to get too fancy. I won't want to wait too long. Also, three Snapcasters in the list and a source of Plowshares in the graveyard. He's going to sacrifice right now. And if you guys haven't seen this before, Tom will be very slow in plotting to begin with, set his turns up, but when he thinks he's got it, he gets moving pretty quick. And I would anticipate that he's going to move in on the Blighted Agent. In case something goes wrong here, he still has the Nexus left over, which is the more valuable enabler. There's an Invigorate on the Blighted Agent. Plus four, plus four. Philip, you get four life. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> so generous. In we go. Berserk. Force of will, perhaps? Schoenager's looking through his cards. Tom well, is hoping it's good, and it is. Tom Ross is going to win game number one here over Philip Schoeniger. In fact, up a game here over Miracles very quickly. That one clocked in at 4 minutes, 15 seconds. And if you want to know if this matchup's bad, Philip had a Sensei's Divine Top on one, two copies of Source of Plow Shares. Counterbalance two. Counterbalance two. Died on turn. Did not get to his fourth turn. Sideboards, Schoenager, an Engineer Explosives, two Containment Priests, the Blue Elemental Blast, the Counterspell, two Fluster Storms, 
two Vendillion clicks, and a whole bunch of one ofs, a Pyroblast, a Red Elemental Blast, a copy of Wear Tear, a copy of Council's Judgment, and a Pyroclasm. Got a lot of good action for this for this matchup here. Every cheap piece of interaction, every piece of removal that's efficient is really good here. So the engineered explosives, the copies of Flusterstorm, the Pyroblast, the Red Blast, the Wear Tear, which can attack a Nexus, the Pyroclasm. Not all of these are superstars. But all Philip needs to do is blunt the early assault, give himself as much cheap interaction as possible, and then he can get to the mid game where he has superior tools. Other side of things, there is a Necropete, a Spell Sky, a Sylvan Library, a Blue Elemental Blast, a Force of Will, a Spell Pierce, a Submerge, a Jite, a Bajuka Bog, a Wasteland, two Hydro Blast, two Crows and Grip, and a Nature's Claim. I think the best place to start is probably that Sylvan Library. The Sylvan Library is excellent in this matchup because Tom needs to be able to weather the storm of removal, so sources of card advantage are great. I think that the two copies of Crozan Grip are nice for this matchup, able to get rid of Divining Top or Counterbalance as appropriate. The extra copy of Spell Pierce as well, uh, just more cheap interaction to fight against Philip's spells. A lot of nice options here for both players. They will go to the drawing board, move some cards in, move some cards out. Unsurprisingly, we do not have an update for you guys in the other match just yet between Brian Brontewin and Royce Walter. Still shuffling away a ponder on the first turn would be my guess. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me one bit. You can tell Philip. With a deep breath there, he knows he's in a really, really tough matchup. His draw was about as good as you guys for game one. Absolutely. You know, he didn't have a terminus in instant speed, but counterbalance, dividing top, two copies of source of plowshares. Hard to ask for much more out of his draw. Ross's draw just lined up better. That's all it is right there. We'll see game number two here in just a moment, but if you are just tuning in, we do appreciate having you. Very close to 18,000 viewers watching the semifinals here of Grand Prix, New Jersey. It is Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan, joined earlier by Matthias Hunt, and of course, Andrew Schrott and Nick Miller on the sideboard, along with the rest of the SUG Live crew. We've got four players left here. We started with about 4,000 here in New Jersey, and eventually we'll have just one. Your tweets at SCG Live and hashtag GPNJR appreciated. We'd love to interact with you as we do make our way through these last couple of rounds, and someone will hoist a trophy at the third largest Grand Prix of all time. What an accomplishment, especially for these four players playing the format they're most associated with, playing strategies that they're known for, a signature win for any of these players. I feel like I've been using the term signature win a lot for Tom this year, but this, this would be the cherry on top of what's already been a fantastic 2014, mind you. It's been one heck of a run, and you know, he's done it his way with the decks he knows, be it Boss Liar, Rebel Red, and Standard, in fact, here, and it's funny because what a lot of people forget is when we were in Grand Prix Richmond, he was about a round away with Infect in that format for qualifying for the Pro Tour. He's had a couple near misses this year, but that does not take away from the enormous set of accomplishments that he's generated this year and a spectacular level of play on camera. He was away from the game for a little while, but he is back. It's good to have him back. All doing it without ever giving away any emotion. He raised his eyebrows today when he got hit with that sudden shock. That was the first time this year that I've seen an expression from Tom. <laughs> well, I think that one would take him by surprise. To take anybody by surprise, yeah. I would think. <laughs> what is that doing there? Oh, well, that's really bad for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to sell a so nigger sort, though. Coming oh. over here from Europe for this Grand Prix. And look where he is. And... If you know him and how skilled he is with this deck, as most of the European crowd do, this isn't much of a surprise. And an advocate for this particular build, very strongly and publicly has promoted four copies of Ponder in this list on top of four copies of Brainstorm. Not every list does this, but makes a lot of sense to me. In a format where you can die very early, I like casting stuff on turn one. He's always said, look, you want to have top every game. Why not have more ways to find it? as Ross is going to take a mulligan. You want counterbalance a lot of games. Why not have more ways to fight it? Why not have more ways to set up Terminus or Entreat the Angels? That's what Ponder allows you to do, and it's crazy to think that this deck wouldn't run Ponder. Ponder's one of the best cards in the format. Well, there's only 60 slots in the deck, and you want to try to fit in a lot of stuff. And because the deck is, you know, full of search, it incentivizes you to play a lot of funky one-ofs. And, and Phillips List does have a little bit of that going on. He's got Power Blast and Red Blast, Counter Spell. Some of that's redundancy, but... Ponder makes a lot of sense to me. I think the burden of proof is on people not playing Ponder, yeah. since it's such a staple of all sorts of legacy blue decks. It is quite the magic card, isn't it? And it looks like Tom's gone pretty deep here, bringing in Hydroblast, which 
basically fight the pyroblast effects and the pyroclasm. Gonna be a tundra to start things off. There's a ponder. So we'll take a look at a couple. Well, he is very happy with that ponder. He'll keep it and pass it. Ross will draw. You saw a mulligan once. Here's a glistener elf. Pass the turn back over to Schoenegger. Two copies of Red Elemental Blast in there, and there's a Sensei's Divine Top. That one's more beautiful than the last one. They all look pretty good. Force of Will to draw. Another treat of covering Legacy is that people take a lot of pride in their decks. Yes, they do. And you will see some beautiful ones. There's a Gataxian Probe. Here's the Grip. Two Red Blast, a Terminus, and Entreat the Angels, and a Scalding Tarn. Very interesting that Philip didn't even consider using a Red Blast here. Uh, you know, these cards are not always the easiest to convert. Tom's deck is base green, and, and Philip did not even hesitate before putting his hand on the table. I mean, somebody must like the top card of their deck. Noble Hierarch. Into the red zone. To infect. Sacrifice the Erd Mesa. Maybe not. Didn't like the top card of his deck that much. Clearly. I think he just has no interest in fighting over things like a taxi and Perub. Let him to go with a basic mountain. I'm surprised Philip didn't decide to alter his beta dual lands. <laughs> you know, they kind of stand out. They're not really altered, not enhanced in any way. Sort of weird. Take a look at the top three cards. I think they just come pre-altered. <laughs> beta. He will draw a card. I believe it's the Swords of Plowshares, and it is. Here's a Scalding Tarn. See if he wants to fire this off right now or not. He will, going after the Glistener Elf. That's gone. We're also get a life. And now Tom is in a position where he can't really fight over that kind of stuff because he knows about the Red Blasts. Drew a Blighted Agent, but Red Blast is going to stop that too. I think Tom might go with Glistener Elf here. I think it's probably a safer way to go. There it is. So a green creature added to the board. Get around those red elemental blasts. And just pass the turn back. Schoeniger will spin the top. Probably in search of a turn. Is very quickly going to leave those cards on top. Sacrifice Skull and Tarn. Go a little bit lower to 17. Search up a land here. It'll be a Tundra. I can appreciate people who take pride in their, their deck. I would be afraid to handle his deck, it's so nice. Much like I was earlier in this tournament when I was playing with the Ely Cassis yep. card. <laughs> Actually, just get these away from me. Here's a sword of plowshares. Fire away. You can tell he's played this matchup before. Some people would wait until the other person's turn, maybe try to catch a pump spell on this. Absolutely not. Not against a deck with Vines of the Vastwood. And Tom has a draw step. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just shut all the stuff down. Don't Ink get too tricky. Ink Moth Nexus to draw. Tom, looks like he's going in for some regular beats. I heard rumors that that's how he got it done last, game, uh, last round. The rumors are true. <laughs> From a lot. Dealt a lot of damage. Here's a Brainstorm. Able to put Terminus and Entreat the Angels back now. Brainstorm is timely. Might actually have a fight over this Brainstorm, which is very interesting. Tom working with a lot of information from that earlier Gataxian probe. He knows about the Terminus, the Entreat, and then two copies of Red Elemental Blast in the grip here for Philip. And he's got a daze in his hand that's not really worth that much. He's actually going to remove Blight Agent. There's a red blast. This is a Hydro Blast. <laughs> the old bring in the blue blast for your red blast strategy. Hey, that's how Magic was meant to be played. Yep. Brainstorm is countered now. Tom left with just one card. He's going to untap. It's time to draw. Didn't get a great look at it. He's got a daze left, though. Gataxian Probe is the card that he's found. Looks like he might fire this off with regular mana. He will. Take a look at the grip. It's a red blast, a terminus, and entreat the angels. There's an attack for two. As Royce Walter does win game number one here over Brian Braun to win. Storm up a game over Jeskai Stoneblade. Ross plays another copy of Nexus, passes the turn back. Only card left for him is a daze. And we predicted game one would be very good for Royce. We're going back Ross's way. He'll draw. Glistener Elf is what he's found. 
Activate. Beatdowns. Snapcaster. Resolves. Source of Plowshare does not, I think. We'll see. He's got a daze in hand. We'll see. He's actually thinking about it now. I thought this would be a pretty fast counter. And, and funny enough here, I thought this daze was diminishing in value, but we've gotten to the point now where if Tom wants to, he can fight over a source of plowshare. It's pretty nice. Yep. Looks like two more, in fact, headed Phillips' way. Do the exalted tree. He's up to six now. Pass the turn back. Tom not even going to replay the land. Wants to save it in case he brainstorms and finds a fetch land. He can shuffle it away. Not playing the Glistener Elf because he's trying to win off the back of these Nexuses. Draw a card. Didn't get a great look at it there from Philip. We do have a updated result from the other match. It's actually Brian Brondwin who did win game number one over Storm. Here's an activation for the Nexus attack. Draw. Terminus. Pay the costs to wreck the boss. Two cards to the bottom. You can see why Tom, being very ca cautious about how he's attacking here, does not want to lose too much to this copy of Terminus. Was able to measure his threats and grind out a little bit of value with Exalted Triggers here. He's, so he's got some leftovers. Tropical Island searched up the Reverend Catacombs. This is a Glistener Elf. That is Nick Nexus. He's reloaded very nicely here. Philip going to replay the top. Pass the turn back over to Ross. Mystery card coming with that tropical. Become immense is the draw. Oh boy. You're putting it lightly. It's heating up. Now he's got to figure out how to make his move, if he will make one. Well, Tom can't go ahead and animate a Nexus and attack with the Glistener Elf. If Philip uses a removal spell inside of combat, he can push on the become events on something else. And if there's a terminus involved, well, he still has a nexus left over. He gets to go for it again next turn. Now, okay, Tom knows that there is a terminus in Philip's hand. The question is, does he make a move here? And these players are, I mean, Philip's staring. He's making a move. He's going for it with become immense. Draw, reveal, force of will. Okay, moving a ponder, okay. I was gonna say, if there's a source of plowshares hanging out on top of Philip's deck, what patience. Yes. However, Philip is up to eight infect. He's still in a world of trouble. Ross will draw. This is a brainstorm. Philip has a red blast and he probably can't use it. Fine to the Vastwood Berserk and a Misty Rainforest. Vines is going to go back. Vines is going to stay in the hand, excuse me. Activate, attack, spin. And this allows him to fizzle something like Source of Plowshares. So now it's Terminus or Bust. And there is no Terminus, and it is Tom Ross that will win this match over Philip Schoeniger. Two games to zero. In fact, moving on to the finals here in New Jersey. Gotta say, Tom makes her job pretty easy. Matches are really fun to call. 18 minutes, and we're on to the finals. Great stuff. Hopefully those restaurants are still open. And Tom cracks a smile. Finally. No, I didn't, Finally. See, it. I didn't see it, so we'll I don't believe to, we'll you. We'll have to replay the tape. I